What's up, wise guys and gals, and welcome to episode 26 of the Wise Eats Podcast. I'm your host, former fat guy and certified fitness coach, Wes Wise, and we've got a new thing going for you today. I'm going to do a little bit quicker of an episode. I'm just going to get in and answer a few questions that I've got recently. I'm going to be talking about weight loss, uh, building muscle, uh, how I got started with my fitness journey, and a couple other things. So... I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to try to make these a little bit quicker, a little bit more digestible for you guys, hopefully a little bit more entertaining. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's dive right in. It's time to wise up. He's a great guy. I enjoyed him. I really like talking to him. He's very wise, very intelligent. I wanted to start today by answering some questions that I got recently. Somebody asked me, you know, how did I get started with my fitness journey? How did I lose all the weight? How did I, you know, get to the place that I am now with my fitness. And I've talked about this a bunch of times before, but way back in 2009, when I first lost 90 pounds, the biggest game changer for me was starting a diet journal and writing down everything that I was eating, kind of counting my calories, even though I was eating processed foods and garbage and drinking alcohol excessively, I was tracking it all. I mean, with alcohol, I was measuring out my shots and um, I was just got real meticulous about counting. And by being in a calorie deficit, I was able to drop the excessive weight that I had. And, you know, that didn't make me healthy necessarily. It just made me lose weight. And then from there, once I lost the weight, then I turned my attention towards uh, building muscle and eating healthier foods and cutting out alcohol. And this was a gradual process over many years. It's taken me since then. It's been 11 years since I started. So it's been a huge journey. But that very beginning was the diet journal that changed everything for me. And it's been a lot of different things since. But you know, if you're sitting there and you're you have a bunch of weight to lose, and you're really struggling to get going, you're not, you know, finding that traction, I fully understand where you're at, you will get there, you just gotta gotta keep fighting for it. And you know, there's no secret formula for that's going to work for everybody, it's going to be different for each individual. So just keep educating yourself. Just try to stay positive and stay motivated. And eventually you will find that fire inside of you that that just triggers that I'm not living this way anymore. I'm going to change the way I am. And it's within my power to do it because it is. That's what I realized, that it was within my power to change my body. And I did it. I see, saw other people doing it. And I'm like, they're human just like I am. So if they can do it, I can do it. So I know you can do it too. If I can change... And you can change. Everybody can change. Next question was, uh, how long have I been training? And uh, in 2009 is really when I really started to focus on my health. Prior to that, I had just never done anything consistent. Maybe uh, when I was a kid, we had a little bench press in the in the uh, basement, and I you know, try to be cool. I'd try to be like a little Hulkamaniac and do some bench presses and train, say my prayers, take my vitamins, brother. And what you gonna do when the Hulkster and his Hulkamaniacs run wild on you? Uh, just kind of sporadic throughout high school, middle school. I never played sports, never was on any kind of routine ever. So I kind of, you know, muddled in weightlifting, but I didn't really get consistent with it until probably my late 20s, early 30s. I'm 37 now. So it's been consistent about seven years maybe. But in 2009, I really started out with a lot of cardio, running, and then some cardio was my priority back then. Weightlifting was second, which was all wrong. Weightlifting should have been number one, cardio number two. Our next question comes from Colin on YouTube. He's a lean guy trying to build some muscle, and I've been there before, so I'm with you 100%. He asks, should I do a full 500-calorie surplus as a beginner, or should I just run two to 300-calorie surplus to minimize fat gain? I maintain on 2,000 calories, but I'm pretty lean, just not much muscle. I would say 100% do a two to 300-calorie surplus, 
and see how your body responds. If you're pretty dialed in to where you know that you maintain on 2000, then just bump that up a little bit. See how your body responds. If you're, you know, if you're seeing strength gains in the gym, you know, you're being able to put more weight on the bar and do the same amount of reps with good form, then you know you're progressing and you know that that calorie count is is right on. And then you can you can adjust it from there based on based on how you respond. So thanks a lot for that question. He also did ask another question. Um, do you remember how you progressed during MAPS Anabolic? Did you start with the lowest reps in the rep range? And once you've hit the higher rep range, then you up the weight and went back to the lower end of the rep range. And he was, yes, the answer to that is yes. If you're, no matter what your rep range is, if you're in the 5 to 7 reps or 8 to 10 reps, 10 to 12 reps, I stick with a weight until I get to the upper end of that rep range. And then once I'm getting that upper end, then I'll up the weight. So if, for example, say I'm doing a barbell squat and I got, I'm doing 185 and I'm trying to hit eight to 10 reps. If I'm hitting 10 reps every time or more on the next workout, or even within that same workout, I'm going to bump it up five to 10 pounds. So I'll bump it up to 190, 195. And with good form, I want to get back to the lower end of that rep range. So eight reps, that'll bring me probably right around eight reps. So you kind of work it like that. Yeah, especially if you're just starting out, you're not going to know exactly what weight you need to use to work within a certain rep range. You know, your goal could be eight to 10 reps and you don't have no idea what that weight is. So you just got to kind of guess, make sure you're safe, do good form, see what you get, and then adjust your weight from there. If you're way over on your reps, increase the weight. If you're way under on your reps, it's too heavy. Lighten it up. So that's going to do it for episode 26. I hope you enjoyed the quicker format. Plan on kind of doing this for a little while, and I hope, you, hope you're digging it. If you are, leave a review on iTunes. I appreciate that. Leave a comment on YouTube. Get at me at Westwise Fitness on Instagram. Shoot me a DM or an email, whatever. Let me know you're there. Let me know you care, and I appreciate that. So with that said, I hope you're having a great day. Have a great week. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. And until next time, make wise choices. Probably right around eight reps. So you kind of work it like that. You just... <clears throat> I love how I just trail off in thought, don't even know what I'm saying next and just die. <laughs> God, what was I just talking about? How did I get started with my fitness journey? What really happened is I just got sick of being a fat. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. 